this is Sarah Mack and welcome to Creative Magic Club. Together, we'll discover inspirational stories of creative entrepreneurs living out their dreams, doing the work they are most passionate about, and building wealth in magical and fun ways. While building a six-figure income as a writer and coach, helping other women to launch their dream businesses, I've connected with so many incredible people and seen it proven again and again that you can thrive financially doing whatever it is you are passionate about. I am here to share life-changing strategies for mindset, making money, and reaching more people with your work in a business and life filled with creativity, freedom, and fun. Hello, hello, happy new year. Sarah Mack here from withsarahmack.com. And I am super excited to share this really amazing, simple new year focus and follow through process that has kind of been an amalgamation of like a lot of different influences that really came together for me this week. And I was about to create a training for my clients inside Create Money the Fun Way. And I was like, this is too good. I need to share this with everybody. So first up, happy new year. And if you're feeling not super like pumped and motivated for the new year, know that you're not alone. We've got Mercury is in retrograde. We've got Mars in retrograde. Those wrap up around the 18th of this month. So it just astrologically and energetically is kind of a slow, start to the year and everyone that I've been talking to has been feeling it. I've been chilling so hard so far this year and you know it's been a process of just like a lot of reflection, um, actually really enjoying just kind of like marinating and doing some journaling and some meditation and like slowly feeling into what I want my focus to be, what I want my action plan to be. And you know, it's so easy to like see everyone else with their big like January shiny action plans, like all, um, you know, full steam ahead already. So if that's been you, cut yourself a freaking break. We all get to go at our own pace. Enjoy your life, like just freaking enjoy your life. If you feel slow, be slow and enjoy being slow. Don't put yourself under pressure. Don't compare yourself and enjoy the phase that you're in. So, um, so this, okay, first off, I want to start with, this has been kind of unfolding for me for a few weeks. So if I share this with you and you like, are like, oh my God, this feels like actually it's not a simple process, <laughs> like permission to pick and choose the bits that just like resonate or inspire you or give you something to chew on for a little bit and know that like this all gets to unfold in your own time. So my intention here is really to inspire you, to open you up and to also give you some frameworks that they are simple if we allow them to be, that will um, give some clarity. And really what I was looking for at the beginning of the year was simplicity. Like I really wanted to feel like I had simplified my focus and I was ready to go deep and to, you know, create some epic results. So I started off with my intention, like what was the, this is like the vibe, this is how I want to feel, this is the energy I want to be experiencing and bringing to my work, which is the most important thing. So I started feeling into this with like some workshops, I was doing some vision boarding with some friends, just like having these conversations. And one of the first words that stood out to me that really resonated was aliveness, like really, you know, like feeling big, feeling connected, um, having the full range of human experience and really savoring that and being present with that. Another word that really came up for me was depth. Um, so again, it was like pulling back from, I'd been feeling like there was quite a few projects on the go and I want to feel more like I can really sink my teeth into the things that I've chosen um, <clears throat> and getting that enjoyment out of that. And another really big one for me is collaboration. Like I've been kind of lonely the last few years and, you know, especially from since the pandemic. And also we moved to this like amazing apartment overlooking the water, but it's the neighborhood is like kind of far away from a lot of my friends. So I'm just realizing how much that's been affecting me and 
Um, so creating, ma making that effort to connect with people, to collaborate, to be, you know, in an exchange and just in feel good connections. That's a really big part of my intention um, for 2023. So I was chewing on that for a bit and just kind of like sitting with that. And then that eventually evolved into my chosen words for the year, which are passion and relationship. And how I got to that is, you know, I was like, passion is the thing that's that's driven me to any decision that has felt good and brought me joy in my life. And that's something that I really want to lean more into. Like that's one of my superpowers. So I really want to amplify my connection to passion and allow passion to be the thing that is driving more and more of my decisions in this year. And relationship was like taking the idea of collaboration, but really driving it deeper and like just connecting for the sake of connecting. Like it doesn't matter, you know, how those collaborations turn out. It doesn't matter what the outcome is. I just want to be connected with people. I want to be in connect connected with people for the sake of connecting with other people to be in relationship because I know that when I do that, number one, it's so fun. It's so nourishing. It's so rewarding and opportunities naturally come out of that. And, you know, it kind of felt like the difference, um, for me between collaboration still kind of feels like there's an exchange um and relationship really feels like we're to get there's like a togetherness and there's like love and connection at the root of that as the purpose of that versus like I'm getting something from you and you're getting something from me relationship to me feels like we're in this together and that's how I really want to feel like with my clients that's how I want to feel with my audience that's how I want to feel in my friendships um, with my family and in just the people in my day-to-day -day life and people, you know, professional relationships and collaborations as well. So, you know, that happened over the course of like a few days. So feel into that, play with that, get it to a place where it feels really juicy. And, um, you know, and this is like a big breakthrough that I've been having recently, like as a creative, my intention behind everything is for the joy of creation and for the joy of connection. Like that is everything. Like when I prioritize these two um, values, everything I do feels amazing. Everything nourishes me. Everything lights me up. And so I generate an energy that then leads to success versus like, you know, trying to like trying to get around that some other way or trying to push or trying to get into an exchange or trying to get into a negotiation, like really coming from a place of creation and coming from a place of connection. So, um, so the next step after you've set that intention is to just connect to your vision. And like, we don't have to go super crazy. We don't have to write out our whole life plan, but just like, where do you want to be in three to six months? Um, and a question that really helps me is because, you know, if you're here having this conversation with me, likelihood is you are along the path of doing the work that you want to do in your world. So it's probably less a case of like, what's the new thing, even though sometimes it can feel like we're starting over when really we're just pivoting and shifting and tweaking. Um, so the question that really helps me is what is the embodiment of the work that I teach? So the work that I've said yes to, or that I'm in the process of saying yes to, you know, creating more opportunities around for me and for, for clients and my audience, is like, what would it look like for me to be fully embodied in what I want for my audience and for my clients? What is it that I'm teaching? What is the next level of embodiment around that? So for me this year, I want to be an author. Like I'm publishing my book. I want to, I want to have a best-selling book. Um, I want a big community of awesome humans who are benefiting from my work and to just be in more relationship, be in more connection around my work and just in my life. And most importantly, for the way that I'm working to be one filled with joy and creativity and connection and to be financially abundant and secure. Like that, that is the vision of my work. Um, and that is the vision that I hold for my clients. And I'm already doing this at a certain level, right? So I get to ask myself, what does the next iteration of this look like for me? And that has really brought me so much clarity around what my focus is for, um, for the next period. So the next decision that I made was setting my stretch income goal for the year. So I recommend leaning into something that 
does feel possible, but it also feels stretchy. So, you know, my ultimate goal is to have a seven figure income, but having a seven figure year like this year, that feels a little bit like pressure to me. That feels like like I'm gonna have to really hustle if I wanna make that happen. Even though I know that that potential is there and I do believe that it's possible now. Um, but my stretch goal is a 250K year. So that's a step towards my ultimate goal that feels kind of stretchy. It's a lot more than I've made in one year, um, but it also feels really doable because obviously I've been doing the work um, to build the business that makes that possible for me. So I set my income goal and I've decided to work in a 12 week focus this year. And this feels really good to me because just like, so I know so much changes, you know, from month to month, um, from quarter to quarter, I'm going through some big changes this year. Like I, we have some big plans. We're moving across the country. Um, my partner's finally finishing his residency. Thank God the sweet Lord. And so a lot about our life is going to change. Um, and so it just feels really good to me to be like, I just want to focus on 12 weeks at a time, really go all in on that, you know, really give it my best shot, be really focused and really an intentional knowing that that's going to set me up for success and so many other opportunities and possibilities as the year unfolds. So within that, I've chosen three main projects to focus on. So how I made the decision on my focus projects is um, I looked at my current projects and desires and priorities, because even though, you know, we start a new year and we're like, oh, it's a brand new year, new me, whatever, all of that, you know, narrative that tends to come up. It's like, well, no, like you're just continuing the momentum that hopefully you were really in alignment with in December of 2022. So yeah, it's an opportunity to like refocus and maybe create some drastic shifts in your focus. Um, but it's also okay if you're like, I'm actually just going to continue, but like, you know, make some, some tweaks and some, bring some more intentionality to what I was already doing. So the question I asked is where am I already having fun and where do I want to build on it? Like what's already going great that I want to take to the next level that I'm really enjoying that there's already momentum around. And then the other question that we can ask is what isn't happening yet? That is a desire for me. So, you know, there's always space to bring in something new. Um, That's been calling you that you feel really excited to take a big leap around that, you know, is going to open doors for you and create dramatic transformation. So choose three things that Um, you know, if they were to succeed, that they would probably take care of a lot of the other projects and goals or desires that you've maybe had in your periphery. Um, But I really like this framework for goal setting in your work and business around building audience, around nurturing your audience and around selling to your audience. Because these are the three things that build our dream business that allow us to make money in the ways that we want to make it that bring us the freedom that we desire in our personal life. So um, I recommend focusing on doing one strategy really well for each of these buckets. Then you just will have a thriving and enjoyable business and life. And, you know, really creating that simplicity and focus creates so much more freedom and spaciousness and free time and clarity. So I'm going to share my three focuses with you. And again, you know, I really didn't overthink this. I was like, well, I get to pick three things. Like number one is my book. Like that's, I'm up to chapter eight. My goal is to finish writing and editing within the next three months and then to publish it in quarter two. So that's like, I've been having the most fun with that. It's in momentum already. So that's a clear, like obvious project for me to continue it. So that's very easy a very easy decision for me to finish writing, to edit it, to get ready to publish it and record it as an audio book. And I've created support for this. So I was working with a coach and um, there was a community around that program, which, you know, I've continued to create consistent meetups to just keep that support going around that project. So this is really important. We get to say like, what have we set ourselves up for success with this goal? What support do we have already that we can continue to nurture? And what support would we like to bring in to really set ourselves up up, up for success with this? Because this is usually the only reason whatever it is that you've set hasn't been achieved. It's just because 
you've made it hard by not by not allowing yourself to be supported. Um, my second goal is to be pitching blog article ideas to editors to start getting some press and PR to build my audience around the topic of my book, which obviously is also feeding into my business and building audience around my business and my programs too. So, um, my simple goal for this is six to eight pitches a week to editors and this is Leo. <laughs> he's into this conversation um and I have I have a support coach for this as well before we get back to the episode I have something exciting to tell you about there were a couple of key things that changed everything in my life as an entrepreneur that allowed me to bring in six figures while working half as many hours and having more fun than ever before in my business it was money mindset work around how I was doing business combined with getting good at sharing strategic sales content online. I know you know that this is your year to start hitting your 10K month income goal and living the life of creative freedom and fulfillment you have been dreaming about. You're ready to be consistently attracting total dream soulmate clients through the creative content you're sharing on social media, and you want to be reaching more people, charging higher rates and working much less. So I'm very excited to invite you to join me in Freedom Club, my mastermind, where you'll receive tailored high-level support to master the skills that will create your dream life and six-figure dream business starting now. With focused weekly trainings and coaching calls to find the clarity on your content that's going to make you the most money, to design a simple, fun launch strategy you'll enjoy following through on, plus daily support and feedback from me in the Boxer Chat, you'll find that sweet spot in your business where you're the most confident in your work having the most fun and making the most money. Go to withsaramack.com forward slash freedom club to apply now. Now let's get back to the episode. And my goal number three is my income goal. So I broke my 250k goal down in two quarters. Wait, is that is the math right? Yeah, six, 62,500 in quarter one, which is a a 5k 5k a week so and then like the tasks underneath that so you create the, the goal and the outcome and then you break down the tasks underneath that and the deadlines for each week so um so within you know off, around that income goal I asked myself well like it's my dream business I get to do whatever excites me like what feels fun what do I want to focus on um, and what has been my intention for a little bit that I'm really excited about is creating um, a new group program on launching group programs. So meta. So I broke down the steps I'll be taking to do that. And I've also included, you know, the, uh, the focus for my content strategy and my daily sales action. So stuff I'm already doing in my business. And as well as that, um, I'm... Got, I've got a plan for some email funnel stuff behind the scenes. So I broke that down into week by week tasks and I'm hiring a new VA to help me with email automation. I have a program that I'm following to guide me through the process of um, program creation, the program creation process, which, you know, I don't need that. I create programs all the time, but I get to make it easy for myself. I get to use the resources that I have give myself frameworks, give myself support in all the ways to make it as easy as possible to succeed. Um, and I have a mastermind and I have biz besties to support me throughout this process that I connect with every week. And I'm also in the process of researching some one-on-one -on -one support with building out my backend funnels too. So I'm still in the process of getting clear on like exactly what I want that support to look like at this stage. So you can see how having this clear plan allows you to get super clear on the kind of support that will best serve you to set you up for success. And it allows you to really simplify your focus and most importantly, drop the other projects that have been sucking your time and energy and momentum and maybe leaving you feeling like, yeah, like you're not making as much momentum as you would like um, on the top priority things. 
So this is going to allow you to really start seeing some real results and progress without feeling busy and overwhelmed because this is a choice, right? Anytime we've given into being busy, we've given into like procrastination and really like a lack of momentum around our goals. That's a choice. And it's really down to the way we prioritize our time and energy. And the most important thing is to be having fun along the way, to be um, creating longevity, right? So knowing that everybody's capacity and focus is going to look different, you are the CEO of your dream business, set yourself up with a process that feels fun and feels manageable. So next, what I did after setting out the goals and the tasks and the weekly deadlines is I broke down the specific tasks week by week and put them in a simple Excel spreadsheet. So I had the weeks down one side and then I had goal one, goal two, goal three, and then it would be like week one and what the... Um, like what the goals and milestones are for each week. So they're very clear. They're smart, measurable goals. Um, you know, they're clear milestones that when I look at them, I'm like, have I completed this or have I not completed this? Or like, you know, what percentage is this complete? Um, and then I took that to my calendar. So beside each task listed in my weekly breakdown, I wrote down the time of the day or the week that I'll work in it. And this is just as rough as like time blocks. So some, you know, daily time blocks for my daily task, weekly time blocks, just, you know, a couple of like um, hour, one to three hour time blocks for some deep work on some of the things that I know need a little bit more deep work or short, consistent time blocks on the daily activities that I know don't take that long. Um, but the consistent daily action is important. So sidebar. If you're a manifesting generator like I am, and many, many, many of my clients are, um, or a generator, <clears throat> this kind of rigid schedule <laughs> rarely works for me. But that's okay, because simply by having the time blocks in my schedule, I know that this amount of time is reserved during my days and weeks for these activities. So there is time available for it meaning extra things won't get scheduled that would leave no time to complete these tasks but i allow the day to be open so that i can really flow with my energy and work on what i feel inspired when i feel inspired to and a caveat to this i know my toolkit and my rituals that put me in the zone for these kinds of activities so when I'm going to do some writing, I start with like movement or meditation or journaling to get my creative juices flowing, like lighting a candle, putting on some vibey music. I know how to get myself in the zone and I know how much time I need for that. So, and obviously sometimes it takes, I need more time than others. Sometimes I have more time than others and that's okay. Like it gets to flow with whatever is available. I get to, you know, do the best that I can with what I have. So, my main priority is to lead with my intention, which is passion and leading from a place of desire. Um, as you can see, like this, you know, this 12 week system, there's a book on this. I haven't read the book. I just found a template to it and incorporated it into my process. So um, it's a very masculine structure. And, um, you know, sometimes this can start to feel like hard or pressury or restrictive. So what to do in that instance is number one, like tweak the goals, right? If you set these crazy goals and you just look at them and you're like, this feels like it's gonna be, I'm not gonna do this. I'm setting myself up for failure. Or if I do try and do this, I'm gonna burn myself out or it's not gonna be fun or I'm like giving myself too much. Like pay attention to that, right? Tweak them, like give yourself less so that when you look at it, you feel like this is actually totally manageable. Like there's really no excuses as to why I can't complete at least, you know, 80% of what I've set out to create. Um, but just having those measurable goals and milestones, you know, it creates that feedback loop and that data of like, am I actually taking action or am I like not moving forward and creating momentum on, on my aligned desires? So, so yeah, so if it starts to feel pressury, shift the intention, shift your focus instead of like, I have to complete these things. Otherwise, like I'm not good enough. I'm a failure. I'm not going to achieve my dreams, right? That's the conversation that makes it feel pressury, which is complete and total utter bullshit. Like this is a framework. Even if you did like 20% of it, you might still hit your goal, right? So this is not like do or die, like ultimatum, like real pressure, 
um, like a pressurey process. And what I found for me is when, you know, I felt like that coming up a little bit, I reminded myself of my initial intention, um, reminding myself that all of these decisions came from an aligned intention in the first place. And for me, you know, my biggest intention is relationships. Like this is the thing that makes it fun. This is the thing that makes it flow. This is the thing that makes it all work when I come from a place of genuine relationship building. So for example, the press pitches that could feel like really like repetitive and monotonous, like just writing pitch after pitch. But in reality, the real intention behind that is to connect with awesome editors, like other people who are like me, they're writers, they're focused on making a difference with world changing content. And knowing that entering relationships with these types of people, that's gonna be really fun for me. And it's gonna feel like fun and connection over and above everything else. And this, you know, these tasks that I've set out, this strategy that I've chosen is really just a vehicle to, you know, encourage me to take action to produce these connections. Plus, you know, obviously there's added benefit to me and to them and to many other lives that will be touched when we are able to create collaboration opportunities. Same with my book. This is really, you know, I could be putting myself under pressure. Like I've got to, I don't know, like become a bestseller, have a crazy launch, like hundreds of people, thousands of people need to read my book. I could be in that conversation or I could be in like, this is me saying yes to my creativity. This is self-care. This is a very nourishing project for me that obviously will also benefit many others when I put it out there. So you can see how the intention and the internal conversation that you're in around your goals is absolutely fucking everything as to how it's going to feel and really that's going to influence your ability to stay consistent to enjoy it and to actually like tap into your magic to create incredible results because rarely does that magic happen when our brains are all shrunken from stress <laughs> and pressure that we are putting on ourselves um and so my money goal obviously like it's so powerful to have a clear stretchy money goal that you know you can measure your progress against that's going to give you feedback as to what's working and not and what isn't working um and in the process of making that money i get to intentionally choose i get to create in ways that excite me to serve others in my business i get to create content in ways that nurture my creativity i get to sell in ways that are fun for me and this is why i started this business in the first place and it's so easy to get complacent, like, oh, I have to post on social media. I have to create some sales content, like, nah. And no, like, this is your choice to make money in this way. You're free to go and get a job working for the man if you don't want to do this. And, you know, I'm speaking to myself. I started this because this is who I am. I am a content creator. And on, honestly, I would be doing this anyway, whether or not this was the way I was generating my income. I was doing this for free before I turned it into a business. And I chose this and I do this because I love it. And who gives a fuck about the destination if you're not enjoying the journey, right? And that is a choice. That is our intention. That is our mindset. And it's so, so, so important that when our energy starts to drop around something or we start to feel that push or that force, like, stop. It's a choice. Come back to your intention. So get, get your clear intention set. Be reminding yourself of that intention. Be throughout the day, like checking in. Am I embodying my intention? I'm like, am I doing this from a place of passion or am I doing this from a place of just got to get this done? Like business robot, right? That is a choice. That comes from presence. That comes from intentionality. And then get the rituals in place to really cultivate enjoyment, enjoyment of creating and connecting through our work, right? We can get up and like, jump out of bed, slam down a coffee and just be like, got to create some content. Or we can be like, I'm going to take some breaths and like meditate and get into my body and connect to my vision. Listen to something inspiring, like get the energy flowing, open myself up, listen to my inspiration. And oh my God, I feel so inspired. What I really feel called to share is, and you can see how that like that intentionality around the way you set yourself up for your work, that's going to produce drastically different results, not only in the feedback you're getting and the clients you're attracting and the people you're magnetizing and the opportunities that show up for you, but in your enjoyment and your energy and like the love of your work and your life. So, so I love this, like just 12 weeks, you know, and you know, 12 weeks are going to go by fast. So it really, you know, 
rather than pressure, it brings that intentionality and that presence and that focus of like, got to make this week count, got to stay on track because I'm excited to see what will open up when I maintain that, uh, that intentionality. And I create so much momentum in doing that. So it's really, really important to you to keep it sustainable by really being intentional around enjoying it. Knowing that when we, you know, even if we do, like I said, like 70 or 80% of what we set out to do, we're going to be in a radically different place at the beginning of quarter two. Like I'm going to have a book. I'll have a new program. I'll have some new people in my audience. I'll have some new relationships with editors. Like who knows what's going to unfold from that place, right? So having these clear, feel good, bite-sized week by week milestones I'm able to hold myself accountable. I'm able to just collect that data. Am I following through or am I in resistance? Where could I use more support? Where do I have unanswered questions? Like what feels hard about this? Or where am I self-sabotaging? Where are there some fears that I need to address and listen to you and support myself around? And what will it really take for me to, to go more all in? So it's all just feedback to keep the focus where you want the focus. Diversions are obviously always welcome. As long as we're having fun, as long as we're making progress, as long as we're seeing the results that we set out to create, it's all a part of the adventure. So remembering like this feedback loop and this data, it's not about shaming. It's not about pushing or giving ourselves a hard time or making ourselves wrong or, or not good enough. Um, and you bet there's gonna be a hell of a lot of growth in this process. So I hope you're feeling excited about taking this, digesting it, making it what you wanna make it, taking whatever has inspired you or like sparked some inspiration to give you some clarity to really go all in on your aligned desires over the next 12 weeks and obviously for the rest of the year. So you can rinse and repeat this with every quarter. Um, so if you know that you're really into these types of conversations, you're really into having intimate support through every step of this process for you, and you know you've been wanting to work with me and get my support with your six-figure year business model, your strategy, your messaging, your branding, your energy management, your audience building, and most importantly, your alignment in your work, this is exactly what you get inside my Mastermind Freedom Club. So we get to work together for a full year. How freaking exciting is that? Like what is even, where are you gonna be in December or January next year after working like this for 12 months? And when you join, you get lifetime access to my 12 core trainings to really master messaging and sales in your dream six-figure business. You get lifetime access to Tell Stories That Sell, my signature course. And while you're enrolled, you get access to every program and masterclass and bundle, including Create Money the Fun Way, my money mindset program, my new upcoming program on launching your signature group program, and you get access to all live calls and Voxer groups and our own private, uh, well, our own group um, Voxer and coaching calls exclusively for um, the women in the mastermind. So tons and tons of tailored support as you grow and commit and follow through on your super fun aligned action plan to be signing clients and experiencing more freedom, rest, pleasure and play in your life, your business and your relationship with money more than ever before. So Freedom Club is perfect for coaches and healers who want to scale their income and their time freedom through selling high ticket coaching, group programs and creating and or creating passive income through digital courses. So this is not a one size fits all method. This is a place to really empower you to follow your desires in business and give you all the skills to launch and sell whatever your heart desires while building an audience of soulmate clients you're so, so excited to serve. So head over to withsaramack.com forward slash freedom club to apply or feel free to reach out to me to have a chat about if freedom club is right for you. I can't wait to hear how all of this, um, this process landed with you today. Please reach out to me, tell me your goals, share and declare them. I want to hear them. I want to hold the vision for you for all of that unfolding over the next 12 weeks and I'm sending you so much love. Bye. For more inspirational content, head over to my website with and please support the show by liking, commenting, and subscribing.